graphics cards, the mythical creatures of the PC world, sold not in stores, but in dark alleys and on dodgy online websites. <laughs> they do actually exist in the real world though. Gigabyte loaned me some of theirs, the RX 9070 and the 9070 XT. They're not very arguably the best value for money cards that have dropped this year. So let's dig into their specs and let's really explore this mythical world. It's not Lord of the Rings, it's just real life. It's a scary place. <laughs> These two cards on the outside look very similar. Even on the inside, both of the cards have 16 gigabytes of GDR6 memory, 128 ROPs, and both cards use 256 bit memory buses. The biggest difference comes in with the graphics chips itself, with the 9070 XT having higher clock speeds overall, with a base clock speed of 2400 megahertz, which is about 330 megahertz higher than the standard 9070. This also means it boosts higher as well, with an extra 430 megahertz of power at the top end. The ones I have here are Gigabyte's OC versions, so they boost even higher than that, with the 9070 boosting up to 2700 megahertz, while the XT version breaks the 3K mark, hitting 3060 megahertz. Another key difference in the chips is the amount of stream processors these cards have, with the XT variant having 4096, which is about 512 more than that of the standard 9070. Now that sounds great, but does it really matter? What are stream processors? Well, they're basically the AMD version of CUDA cores. They work very differently, but they do the same thing in essence, which is handling the calculations of multiple data points simultaneously. The real question here is, will you need more power to supply these cards? Probably not. These cards aren't all that power hungry, with the biggest of the two, the XT, only needing a max of around 304 watts, which could easily be run on a 750 watt PSU. And as a benefit, they haven't switched to any of the new funky cable designs either, with most of the versions running on two to three tried and tested 8-pin power cables. As for what Gigabyte has done with their spin on these cards, design-wise, they're very minimal. They say, hey, we're gonna give you all of the performance, none of the fluff. I mean, the point of a graphics card is your screen, not the card itself. So I get where they're coming from. They spent your money on the performance of the card, not necessarily on the design of the card. Yes, this little slidey thing, it is a strange concept. However, I like the fact that I'm not bombarded with a bunch of RGB and I get some good performance out of this thing. Cooling wise, we know Gigabyte put a lot of focus on their fin design of the fans. We have three of their wind force fans and obviously they keep on tweaking and readjusting the to always give you better and better cooling and to keep the noise down. Each little blade, for example, has its own little mini wing and some extra ridges and grooves placed in key points. Does this actually do anything though? <laughs> During the testing, we saw a max of 70 degrees on the 9070 XT while running Furmark for around 15 minutes. Max effort testing. And even less on the 9070. The best part is that the fans didn't even go to 50%. So if you're willing to deal with a little bit more noise, you can even get the temps even lower, which isn't bad considering the size of these cards. Compared to some of the other cards we saw this year, these things are tiny, coming in at only 2.5 to 3 slots thick and 288 millimeters long. The build quality is pretty solid too. I didn't see any sagging, although I would recommend that you put one of those little support beams underneath your graphics card just in case. Performance wise, I'd say they sit firmly between a RDX 5070 and a 5080. Well, at least in terms of raw rasterized performance. It's a completely different story when you bring ray tracing into the question. They are still a few generations behind, losing to the 5060 Ti in almost all ray trace tests. So if you're an all power, no fluff type of gamer, you're one of the many who thinks that ray tracing is just a gimmick, then these are really solid cards. They actually might be the best value for cards released this year. We'll put the Wheelitech stamp of approval on it for that. Not that the competition was very fierce though. <laughs> While these cards can definitely venture through the Lord of the Rings map, uh, they can also handle light 4K gaming. I'd say if you want to see more than 60 FPS on very demanding games, then I'd rather stick to 1440p or even 1080p on these cards. I would actually avoid ray tracing altogether with these cards, to be really honest with you. The performance loss for some pretty reflections is simply just not worth it in my opinion. Do these sit on the top of my picks for low mid-range options for GPUs in 2025? 
Well, at least as far as what's come out this year, yes. Especially if you don't want ray tracing or AI frame gen to carry the weight. If you want real raw performance without the fluff, the RX 9070 or perhaps even the 9070 XT it's a pretty good buy, especially if you can get them at good prices like they are right now. I'll leave some links down below. They are affiliate links. Thank you for supporting the channel if you buy your products through that. We really appreciate it. This was Stefan from Tech, spending the money so you don't have to, sometimes also wasting the money. See you in the next video. Cheers, bye. Remember to like and subscribe. Oh, we reached 100,000 subscribers. Can't wait to get our plaque. Thank you for supporting. Cheers.